Good morning, everyone. I'm glad to be here. It's my uh, second trip to Finland, actually. The last time uh, I was here, I was uh, uh, 14 years old and uh, spending a full summer driving throughout Norway, where I am from, from the south in Fredrikstad, and all the way up north with my family. So when we were up there, my father was like, hey, let's uh, visit Finland for the first time. So we did. We crossed the border at some random place with our goal to reach a great lunch, you know, and have a great time in a small, nice place in Finland. We never found that place. So basically, um, after driving for a while, you know, up there, the distances are long and we, we gave up driving back to Norway without talking to a single person. This trip, however, is quite the opposite. So this is a very nice experience. Very glad to be in Helsinki. Great city. So let's get started. My name is uh, uh, Tor Andrea, and uh, with me I have uh, our senior developer, Marco. Um, we work in uh, Frontcom. It's a digital agency located in uh, Norway, Portugal, and uh, Poland. We are an innovation-oriented company, I might say. So um, uh, our work with uh, Gutenberg JS and Gutenberg Cloud, and also several other projects, is supported by the Norwegian Research Council. Now, Gutenberg Cloud. All web project owners want to provide the best editing experience possible for their users. Whether your site is a university site, a non-profit site, or a high-traffic news outlet, you want to empower your editors with the absolutely best tools to grow their digital presence. Now, we originally come from the Drupal world. Now, Drupal is uh, almost like a CMS framework, um, but the Drupal admin interface can feel overwhelming. It's not always intuitive. And these days, you expect a CMS to be both flexible and easy to use. So this is why we introduced Gutenberg Content Editor for Drupal. And we presented this in uh, uh, Drupal Europe, which is a conference that was in Germany this fall. We started with the Gutenberg editor. We stripped away the PHP from that and created a pure React library called Gutenberg JS. On top of that, we built a Drupal module. And uh, uh, last week, we had a release candidate for that on Drupal.org and it already has more than 9,000 downloads. Our original motivation was to just improve the Drupal authoring experience. But as we got started, a greater vision emerged. Making Gutenberg the go-to solution for editing rich content on the web, period. Gutenberg is more than just another editor. We believe that it's a platform enabling amazing new features built by the community, by all of you. And this is uh, why we have really focused on making it easy to add new blocks and share your code. What has happened in the uh, WordPress space is that uh, companies are releasing nice collections of blocks. Well, this introduces a bit of bloat, however. So let's think a bit bigger. We want a sustainable ecosystem of blocks, but also the ease of use. This is why we created Gutenberg Cloud, your library of blocks in the cloud. Now, Gutenberg Cloud is a, a browsing experience for downloading and enabling Gutenberg blocks. 
any developer can actually add their own blocks by putting code on NPM and ping us for a code review. The code itself is uh, served via a CDN. Uh, it's all just uh, JS and CSS anyways. And since the blocks are JavaScript only, they work across Drupal and WordPress alike. Now, this is really interesting. You can now build a front-end for WordPress and Drupal at the same time. It's all about open source. Anyone can publish their blocks. We do code reviews, but it's only for security purposes. So this is the, this is the plugin you need. And while this plugin is uh, stable already, uh, we're just getting started. Uh, we're happy to see that uh, there's uh, already been some uh, uh, interest from key players like uh, Matt and uh, Dries, which is the founder of the uh, Drupal uh, CMS. And this work uh, is also covered by uh, VP Tavern uh, several times by uh, Sarah Gooding um, in this article here. So, let's get ready for the demo. So, um, what uh, Marco here will start show uh, is a demo of, um, well, it's the demo page on uh, gutenbergcloud.org. Feel free to have a visit if you'd like. But let's go. Okay. Okay, so as shown previously, you can browse through all the, the blocks published on the cloud, but you can also try them out without installing on your site using this demo site, the demo.gutenbergcloud.org. So let's try here. As you can see, it's just a simple Gutenberg editor. Let's strip down. And let's try some to have some blocks available on the cloud. For example, you have this uh, content in columns. Okay, so works pretty good. You can change the settings as you would. Um, you can upload it. Just to check how it looks. Looks good. Yeah. So it's a plane. It's a plane. In case you've missed it, and um, you can try it here too. So, uh, can you help me out? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's over here. Oh uh, yeah, this one yeah. probably. No. Oh. This is mm. something Nordic. Yeah. Yeah. Nordic. Nordic. Not, not, not Nordic. <laughs> yeah, there we go. It's a mountain. Yes. Okay. So it works pretty good. And you don't have to install any of the cloud blocks to, to on your WordPress site. But you could, of course. But you could. So let's have a look at how that works. Um, so I have... Um, a local WordPress uh, installation here. So uh, what I do then is to go to the plugin page. I click Add New. And then I will search for Cloud, whoa, cloud Blocks. And here we have it. I can uh, simply install it here. And after that's done, I uh, activate it like this. And I'm all ready to go. What happens now is that uh, you can see that I, I get a cloud blocks link in my main menu. So I go here and I'm straight into the same uh, list of cloud blocks. And I can select a few to install or activate actually. So uh, let's do that content in column block also that Marco showed. And we should be good to go. 
I'll go to uh, pages now and add a new one. And well, the obvious title, WordCamp Nordic. And let's start with that hero section that just installed. Well, for Drupal, no. For any CMS, of course. I can change some settings there, like uh, set that image on the left side. I can say that I want an image in the background instead of a solid color. And then I can choose to set the amount of overlay for that block to make my contrast for the text good enough. Readable, yet a visual background. Very good. Let's go down here and add that content in columns block. And then I get the same list view here, like uh, Marco just showed you. Oh, sorry. But if you prefer, you, 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 you can, to, if you prefer to have your blocks uh, codes on your WordPress site locally, um, you can install them locally. Uh, and by local, it's, I mean on the WordPress uh, folder. Uh, all you have to do is just uh, zip the block folder and upload it. Let me show you. Let's go to Cloudmost there, yeah. You want me to save it? Yeah, it's on the region for you there, Marco. <laughs> yeah, Marco is from Portugal, by the way, so... But your Norwegian is getting better, so... Yeah, yeah, it's getting there. Yeah. So, you can find the tab, the local tab here. And as you can see, it's empty, so let's just upload a new block. It's this one? Yeah. And install it. So now that you've uploaded, you can just simply activate it. And it will be available on the editor. Nice. And that's cool. the first version of that block, Marco, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a cool block. It's probably the last one also. <laughs> okay. So uh, uh, we've seen how to uh, install this uh, in, uh, in WordPress. We have activated uh, uh, actual cloud blocks, which is served from the cloud. And we have installed our local block. Now let's have a look at the use case. Um, we are currently working on um, uh, the new uh, website for uh, UNICEF in Norway. Uh, they have uh, a Drupal site. So just for the fun of it, let's demo that in Drupal and see how that looks there. Um, there we've also made like a variation of the hero block. Let me just set an image for that. You see that it has some of the similar elements. It also has some uh, uh, interesting styling features for the text where you can highlight some of the text, which can be toggled on and off up here. Um, I can change the actual text here, of course. And uh, to make the design consistent, we removed the styling options for that part. But of course, they can also go in and uh, change that button text. Uh, and add a link, of course. And in the sidebar, we have a few options, like, for example, very relevant for them is to uh, add a donation form to the block, uh, to choose if you want like a full height for that, or a, a, a bit smaller one. They can choose to remove the title, uh, the teaser text, and even the call to action button there in the bottom. Uh, let's have a look at another. We can check the 
mosaic block, which is uh, uh, two columns and a lot of demo content to make it easier for them to get started building out the content. So uh, they can go in here and replace uh, the photos to something that uh, they'd like. A lot of unsplash photos here in testing already. And of course, they could set their own text here, which of course is WordCamp Nordic. And the text here, as they choose. And of course, obviously, the link. One last block that I'll show you is a block called fact for displaying facts. It has a basic look like this and some uh, uh, icons that are preset here. We have a, a large uh, title field here. And uh, we're also able to add a small title above that, something like medicine. And then the actual fact. Did you know, for example, that 80% of all medicine is, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you did know that, yeah. Yeah, it's a fun fact. You can bring that up in several locations, actually. Yeah. And then you can add a uh, text to that. Support us, if you'd like. So that should be it. Mm -hmm. Let's move to... Right, under the hood. Yeah. Let's check out all things is it are done. Yeah, it's a cat under a hood, as always, obviously. Yeah. Okay, we already mentioned that cloud blocks are published to NPM. Uh, is anyone familiar with NPM? Yeah. Okay. Great to see that. Yeah. So NPM is basically a software package manager, originally made for uh, managing Node.js uh, packages and its dependencies, uh, but nowadays it can be used for any language. Okay, so the easiest way to create a new cloud block and eventually publish it is to use the create cloud block command line, <coughs> sorry, command line tool that we developed. And of course, it's open source. You need to have Node.js and NPM installed on your system. And to install it, you just need to execute that command. NPM install uh, with the global flag and create cloud block. Okay. So after the tool install, you can execute uh, this command, npx create cloud block, and then the name of the block you want to give. In this case, we name it WCN block. Um, so this will create um, a basic block with all the structure, the cost structure necessary uh, for a cloud block. You know, basically it's a block starter to make your life easier. It may take a while to execute this command because uh, the tool also installs an instance of gEditor, which is a React app. You already seen it. It's basically the demo site. Yeah. Um, and that allows you to quickly test the block while, while you're developing. <clears throat> okay. So, you know, instead of building the block, uh, zip it and move it to the WordPress uh, uh, install folder and test it on WordPress, this is quite easier. <clears throat> and basically, basically, that's it. So to come here, we just run the command npm start and it will automatically open a browser window and run the gEditor uh, instance 
And then you can just add your block to test it. Yeah, cool. Um, and when your block is ready, you can just build it with the command uh, npm build. Uh, you can zip that. It, basically, what it does is uh, creates um, the package on a on the build folder with with minimized uh, minified uh, codes, and then you can just move it and upload it using uh, the cloud block plugin. Or you can just publish to npm by running uh, npm publish. Yeah. That's what we really want, though, so we can share our code. Yeah, it's quite easy. Easy. OK. So just a note, um, I'm noticing that some developers are a bit uh, apprehensive about learning JavaScript, and especially React. Um, but taking from, from my own experience, I had very little experience with React before this, uh, you know, Gutenberg revolution, um, but still using this tool, the create uh, cloud block, and uh, of course following the WordPress.org uh, <coughs> uh, block reference documentation, I was able to build some some quite complex blocks. So, guess what? I actually learned React by building blocks. Yeah. Yep. Very good. With Gutenberg JS and the Gutenberg Cloud, we envision a growing library of CMS agnostic blocks, design components, and even proper web components. You code it once and reuse your designs in any CMS. We believe Gutenberg's ease of use will bring new business opportunities to other open source projects and ultimately improving the open web. To learn more about this, go to gutenbergcloud.org and also check out uh, drupalgutenberg.org uh, for updates. Mm -hmm. You can follow uh, at gutenbergcloud on Twitter and our latest slide has all the resources and links that you should need to get going. Yeah, and as an end note, thanks for all the Gutenberg contributors and testers out there. Uh, we believe that you've built something truly powerful. Um, yeah, you're basically a testament to the power of open source. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, now we have time for questions, like in the first round. So we have a couple of options in here. We can use that mic if you want to uh, walk a little bit, or we can use the draw mic also. Sure. So is there any questions from the audience? Who like dice? Okay. There. Yeah, that'd be nice. First one. It's on. Oh, hi. I'm Nicholas. <laughs> uh, so, is this a free service or a paid service? And do you have any? If it's free, do you have any monetization plans? What What, what are you thinking? It's totally free, and uh, that's the whole idea behind it. Um, we're allowed to stay here and talk about these uh, good things, and hopefully that's going to give us some uh, good opportunities uh, as well. So that should be it. And of course, we think that um, that kind of model is something that we need, you know, that kind of open source spirit that uh, can help us to actually involve people like you to the project. So we need that. Yep, go ahead. Uh, hi, I'm Christian. Um, really interesting project. Uh, I was looking at the uh, state of the word the other day, where Matt says something about maybe in the future blocks 
uh, or the finding of blocks should be in, implemented in WordPress core, as in you write and then you kind of search and then you maybe just install the block. Uh, have you been in contact with them about this or do you envision this to influence or even be the solution for the core block uh, integration find thing solution? I know that our CTO um, uh, has been in contact directly with Matt related to these kind of things, but I'm not familiar with the details, sorry, so no extra snack for that. Um, what's the state of localization and translation of the blocks? So is it possible to download uh, language files or something? Well, yeah. Currently, it's not, but that's something we've been working on. But you can use um, uh, the default, for example, if you use the... Um, uh, in Drupal, we have this translation f function. In WordPress, we have also the double underscore, right? So you can use that. And, uh, but on the... I'm sorry, on the Backend, you know, on the admin, admin UI. For the front end, well, basically it's the it's basic content. stuff. Yeah, it's content. Yeah, yeah, it's content. So yeah, it's possible to translate. Hi, my name Hi. is Stanislav. Really cool project. Thank you. Uh, so you've shown a couple of blocks here, and you've shown mostly like front end blocks. And I'm wondering if you want to have a block, for example, that would list the latest posts from a category of posts or like blocks that would require some sort of database connectivity for each CMS. Uh, how is that handled? And if it's not, how do you plan to handle it uh, in the future? Well, obviously blocks that uh, uh, integrate specifically with the CMS itself and uh, need to be specific for the CMS. So we've been discussing, you know, a way to categorize, uh, categorize that uh, when you're on the in the in the browser, so you can sort of exclude the ones that integrate with different CMSs and uh, see that all well, this is a WordPress integrated block, for example. But then you would commit the code to npm the PHP parts of the code, or yeah, sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Any other questions from the audience? Um, I have a couple. We have time. <laughs> I have like 21 questions. <laughs> Great. Uh, um, you mentioned like the Gutenberg JS. I didn't really get it. Do you mean that you have kind of ripped off the Gutenberg from the current plugin version or something? You kind of maintained that, maintained that kind of separately from the core and from the Gutenberg plugin itself? Or what the Gutenberg JS mean in this context? Well, basically, uh, uh, Gutenberg for WordPress obviously has uh, uh, quite, a, quite a lot of uh, PHP that connects to WordPress. Uh, and um, yeah, that's, we basically removed all of that PHP and replaced that with uh, React components instead. Right? Yeah. So uh, to make it like uh, CMS agnostic. So you know, the Drupal example we just did here is just, well, that's the exact thing that we've built so far. But uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, using Gutenberg JS uh, as a component to run the editor anywhere. Is that horrible to maintain because there might be lots of changes in the Gutenberg code base which are not related to JavaScript? So you, do you need to like rip off stuff like every day or every week or how the process goes in practice? Can I? Yep. Sure. Uh, actually, there's a little overrides to the code so we made so so because you know the gutenberg react part is so well made so so modular that it's possible to do that so we just uh for parts like the probably if i remember correctly the core image block perhaps and well the rest like uploading files and things like that they are quite modular you can implement uh, a separate components without overriding anything on Gutenberg. So, yeah, it's very little overrides we have. That sounds good. Um, 
I did have a couple of other questions. Now I just yeah, 19 actually. Yeah, 19 left. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes, it goes the third one. Just can't remember anymore. But um, is there any other questions from the audience while I'm thinking a couple of the hard ones? <laughs> Uh, you already mentioned while you were speaking the kind of couple of options you might have. So did I understand correctly that one option is actually that somehow you get the JS for the block itself from the kind of from the NPM library and it lives somewhere and it sucks hooks into the uh, admin interface in any CMS. Well, uh, where does that JS actually live? Basically, it's uh, uh, served through Cloudflare. Okay. Uh, just like Google Fonts, for example, if you use that. So, you know, for 98% of the sites out there, uh, your blocks will be served faster using this service than your own server. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. And the other option was that you can actually upload the zip file of the kind of the block code itself, and it installs in WordPress case, for example, in some folder. Yeah, or? it's yeah. on the there's a folder and on the uploads. There's the folder called Cloud Blocks. It will live there. Okay. Yeah. That's clear. Right yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, one more question on oh, the seventeen. <laughs> so, I think the hard part is getting people involved, because as I understood correctly, that the whole point is that people like you in the audience, people like me perhaps in the future, yeah. people like Marco, who are interested in kind of learning a little bit React and JavaScript, could actually create a block which you can use in any software or any CMS. What are the kind of the struggles that people actually start doing that? Or is there already like of lots of lots of kind of donations by the God already? How, how it's been to start? Or are um, those example blocks something that you have actually created or are they made by somebody else? And how many kind of coders there are already who have uploaded their own block in there? Well, uh, we made a few of them. And some are like uh, contributions from people that we hardly know uh, out there. Uh, but of course, you know, this is, um, this is quite fresh still. And uh, we, just, uh, we just released it, uh, basically. So uh, I think, and we really enjoy this opportunity as a first step to reach out to all of you guys. Because uh, it's, uh, well, it's difficult to contribute to something you don't have ever heard about, obviously. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But uh, as Marco mentioned, it's probably, you know, uh, getting into React and everything like that, that could be feel like a large step to someone. But what's really good then with using the Create Cloud Block um, uh, package as a starting point, it really helps you to get that structure in place uh, so if you're familiar with JavaScript, you can dig into that and you'll sort of understand how to work with React and you're, by doing that, you'll actually learn React. So it's a very good, very good starting point. It's a win-win for, yeah, definitely recommend checking that out. That all sounds good. Perhaps in next contributor day, we can, you know, yeah, that'd be that great. platform. Yes, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions from the audience? We still have a couple of minutes, so at least one question. Can you walk or can you draw the mic from there? Yes, I can. There is one from here. Can you? <laughs> Hello. <clears throat> Hi. Um, Gutenberg's obviously changing a lot. Um, Did you have a question? Uh, 5.2 came out recently. So how are you navigating the changes in Gutenberg? And have you seen the proposed changes about defining blocks as, as JSON so that they can be available in the API, so they can be used in stuff like the mobile app? Good question. Well, we do need to chase uh, uh, the main repository for that. Uh, so, and we usually need some time 
to uh, to up update the Gutenberg JS library. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, and that was also why we didn't get like a stable release of that uh, earlier because we had to wait for the actual 5.0 uh, WordPress release. Are you involved in the GitHub project? Are you trying to contribute to that and feedback? Um, yeah. We have a developer. Yeah. Yeah. Several, actually. Yeah, but, so, uh, uh, but as I said, uh, for Gutenberg GS, for example, uh, now, if we, now that the Gutenberg and uh, WordPress 5 is more stable, uh, it's quite easy to, you know, move the, the changes to Gutenberg GS because since we use a few overrides, it's quite easy to to update that. So, so in terms of um, so far, what kind of uh, time aspects? How much time are we using uh, usually? Do we need when we get a new? Uh, uh, for the last version, I think it was one day or two, probably. Yeah. yeah. So we're usually quite quick at updating that yeah. library. Thanks. We have one last question from there. Yes. Hi. Um, I was just curious, how well does the Gutenberg blocks integrate with the REST API? Um, well, the Gutenberg cloud doesn't integrate with the API. We, to make it available across uh, many systems, like Drupal and WordPress, eventually more to come using Gutenberg, we need to make it, uh, for now, we need to make it as simple as possible. So uh, on the admin UI, we will have uh, basic JavaScript and CSS. And for the front end, of course, it's only, it's only outputting HTML. So for now, we are doing this. But in the future, who knows? And if we have more contributors, we can find some uh, solution to kind of uh, fetch data from several APIs from several systems. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. I think that was our last questions because of the time limit. Mm -hmm. But once again, huge, huge thank you about the presentation with the applause. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you.